Hey everybody, today on Buzz School, we talked to Laura Brown, the editor of InStyle. Laura's had a long career in media and she shares a lot of often hilarious insights on how to navigate that world. Um, she also shares with us the importance of earning trust, having a really clear point of view and how she is never afraid to take a swing. Enjoy and stay buzzed. You have always been the funniest girl in the room. Always, and you know this. I think finally, I'm just, not about those rooms, then that's <laughs> no. But you know it, and I feel like I always say it'd be great to see ourselves the way other people see us. Or if we could do that sooner in life, you know. But right. maybe you have that gift because I, as your star has risen, and for me, it's been fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I uh, have always thought that people gravitate to you, and that would include men, but also celebrities <laughs> and women of all sorts. Um, but but really because because of that you know that confidence and that uh, sheen of, that, that sheen of desperation yes that, that too that always I'm an only child please be my friend no but Laura it's also just being hungry too I think but but you're real right you're real so how guess to so. what to what do you attribute that that sort of grounding in, um, yeah Tell yeah. Me. Uh, uh, I do think being an only child, even though I do have a sister, she's my half sister, though. I was just, I was brought up. She'll get mad at me if she ever sees this. She always goes, What about me? Oh, she's gonna see it. This is big. I'm only That's child, okay, with a single mother. So, so, my day to day was um, me getting out in the world and doing stuff and wanting to be part of everything. And I, I wanted to do fashion pretty early on. So, I just started like immersing myself in that. And, 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 and so there was, I think there was a desire to do be a part of all of this, a real, still an appreciation for all of this, not in a way that I think it's more glamorous than me or better than me or the myth. There's not a mythology anymore, um, but it's certainly appreciation. So I think I'm just kind of, I think being Australian, uh, you know, I think that um, just sort of being happy to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I think, and I think if you just got a good good sense of yourself and you know that you're a, I'm mean, pretty basic, honestly. I mean, I know you're a good, you know, you're a good person. You do good work. You're kind. You can walk into a room with kind of a, a with your shoulders held high and 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 be happy to be there because you're kind of not being dragged down by something inside yourself, you know, or yeah. or you know, or not. And I also realized pretty quickly in the fashion game that they're not smarter than me. <laughs> they're not better than me they're not you know what I mean and it's an industry that really tries to make you feel like that often I was like hang on a minute yeah this is not Mensa is it mm -hmm. um and, and then, then the sooner I kind of got the measure of that I was like no I have like quite a bit to say here and, and people will listen to me and I think that there's also just an equity that you build same with you and your business and your relationships and everything else this is equity you build from what you've created and who you know that I think gives you a, and getting older, you know, gives you an ease, a greater ease than you had when you were younger. So it's just sort of like, I can walk in any, pretty much any room now and just be like, okay, you know, and like, hey, you know, and like throw someone on my damn lap, which now I can barely, I'm barely allowed to do again, but I like it. And um, yeah, I, I, so at the end of the day, I think it's kind of happy to be there. Even though I'd be a bit dazzled by, you know, celebs and stuff at the beginning, I never thought they were kind of better than me or they deserve more than me. And I say to the kids all the time, I said, envy no one. They don't have anything that you really want when you really parcel it out. So I think, and having worked with all those sorts of people for 20 years as well, it's like, I always say I'm respectful, but not reverent. And I learned that one of my greatest lessons was meeting Karl Lagerfeld and I was absolutely freaking so nervous because he's so smart and I was going to meet him and I was like oh my god and I'm like sighing in the back of the car I'm in Paris and the driver's like are you in stress and I'm like, yes I'm in stress um and I got there and he was like and we just got the measure of each other very quickly he's like oh do you want to go just come see my 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 hairspray and then I was like bang 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 and then I was like okay this is like the freaking emperor and I'm, yeah. I'm managing here and there's no reason to be intimidated by anybody um, you've had such a career in media and, uh, it's kind of like the dream, the dream career. I mean, at least as an observer, but <laughs> Harper's talk, W details. I, talk, I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, but we talk a lot with our clients about how the landscape has changed, obviously, and how, you know, power 
of influences change and, and all that good stuff. So yeah. as someone who's really been in the thick of it, like what's your take right now? Oh, um, how long do you have? If I poured mm -hmm. a wine to do this right now. Um, my take is you are whatever medium you're in and obviously print is, you know, is challenged and, and, but whatever medium you're in, you'll do well if you have a point of view. If you don't have a point of view, if you don't have something to say, then you're useless. And um, if you're just aggregating or like throwing stuff out there or just like posting things with people that have 100 million followers, it's not interesting. So mm -hmm. I think that I, I, you know, I started at InStyle um, three months before Trump was elected and, um, and pretty quickly had to decide not even what side we were on, it was more like being on the right side of history. And it was very clear what was and what wasn't. So that's how I sort of navigated it through those four years. And and since, so I think you can't be kind of milk toast. You can't like, you know, there's, I look around now and I had a bunch of magazines and I just go like, eh? Like you don't have to be like, you know, swinging. I mean, you don't have to be like getting mad at stuff all day, but it's like, take a swing. Like being original, so I do get quite, I, I, because I have, I've done that, you know, and I've done it from a good example is this cover I put a couple of days ago with Tommy Dorfman, who's my friend of like four Absolutely. years, and, and um, I just happen to have, to have known a long time, and we love and trust each other a lot, and, and did that, and like, I'm like, why is this? I don't know why is why aren't other brands taking a swing, and that's what distinguishes us. And I honestly, I said this is one time I'll toot my toot my horn there's somebody on twitter i don't even know who she, who she was she was like a media reporter or something and it was it wasn't this cover it was the one i did with deb harland the interior minister mm -hmm. um and and the lady wrote amazing cover first indigenous cabinet minister blah 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 in style and i said this you know by laura brown the last of the daring editors and i was like shit i don't well, think i hope you're not, not the last no i don't i don't and i also i'm not, I'm not flattering myself to think i am the it, but I wish people were more. You know, I really wish people were more, were more daring with with what they do because that's how you last. And I don't care, I don't care. It's on reads in style like this, or reads in style like this, or goes sterling. I do not care. Everything is a reader to me. I'm not precious about it. I'm not. Look, I I love to see a print magazine and a glossy cover, but I for years I was a bit like, well, you can't tell if a cover is good on the, on your phone. You can. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's all these things that actually can read to you digitally as well as they can on print. And I d don't care which way you go, but we've still got like 1.4 million subscribers to the print yeah. edition. So I'm not fussed, but have a point of view, have a, you know, what would they say? What would I now be uh, discouraged from saying? Like have a, a set, you know, um, but just like have some freaking guts. Well, I think those things are related though. Having, yeah wherever your confidence came from yeah. and then having the instinct to make bold choices. But also like, yeah, that's it. Like bold choices. I still run a fashion magazine. I'm not freaking embedded in cobble. Like, you know what I mean? Like a bold choice for me is not, you know, on the scale of journalistic bold choices, particularly bold, but you know, there, there can be a very low bar in, um, in my business. Whereas literally like stick a lady on who's got all these followers, whether or not, you know, she really is a good influence on people or I won't do that. I won't, I will not work with one woman that I don't respect. And if I find out later that maybe somebody didn't know, wasn't so cool, mm -hmm. very rarely does it happen. We never shoot with them again. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not hitching my, I've got more confidence in our brand, our ideas, our ability that I need to just prove myself. I like, see, I know her or see, we got her. I hate Did that. You did you have to run that up the ladder, as it were, to get approval? I mean, instinctually, um, you felt you really just were given. Uh, I just, they, well, I think they knew that I'm like, you know, I know, I think I know what I'm doing as an editor, but I also have a good sense, a good public sense. I think I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm not super snob. I'm not a snob. I'm not walking around in couture all day. I eat my dinner. So I think I have a pretty good idea of like what people out there want. Um, yeah. You know, and it, and it could be something rarefied. It could be something really silly. So I think they they hired me because they knew I could do that. Um, and I also think that it's not just about one woman on the cover that you go, okay, well they'll post it. And it's the women on the cover. And it's the point of view that is relayed by 
well, how many have been there five years by the 60 women plus with all our subscriber covers, probably 80 women, you know, um, that we've put on the cover and a couple of dudes and Stephen Colbert, <laughs> um, that we've put on the cover so far. And you, there is a commonality between them is that they're all rad and they're all inspiring. And that's the statement you make rather than like, you've got like X Insta model one month and then someone else from a girl band the next god bless and then someone else and there's no you know you don't go what am i getting out of these people apart from insta clicks <laughs> what do you pay attention to like when you um my lester holt no just kidding i love Lester Holt. um <laughs> i pay attention to uh my news is off twitter you know my news is from twitter and insta twitter and instagram basically uh i have like I mean, they really, I mean, as much as, you know, you go social media is too much, they do distill stuff very, very well. Um, so I sort of get most of my news from social. I have like Apple News and everything else. But I, that, and also I'm very TV, you know, all that sort of cultural stuff. Also, also just sometimes people I meet, you know, I get very, back to my like, not only child, but only child um, thing. When I kind of meet someone, my team used to have a joke, like if I had been at a dinner with someone the night before, they'd be in the magazine the next day. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, so I sat with, blah, 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 blah. And we should do, we should do, we should do. And I'm like, okay. But it's it's with, I, it's people I meet and I don't necessarily have a plan with, with, I don't go in to people and just go, you know, it'd be good. I'm with them for an hour and I'm like, oh my God, you know, it'd be good. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of, I kind of just lurch around. Mm. Isn't it great though that you can, and now you know you have a track record of doing that. So now you just oh. it's so good. I mean, I say yeah. all young folks all the time. And I, I want to make I say ownership a lot, equity and ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, you never lose that work you've done. It all builds up, even if you left a job or whatever. You don't. That doesn't. You're not lesser. All of that is yours. So the more stuff you make, the happier you'll be. So talking about social media, you are so skilled in it. And I can tell it seems to speaking of lurching happen <laughs> happen naturally, but because you're funny, you're it's informative, it's you know, it's engaging. Yeah. So is there a strategy other than just <laughs> not overthinking it? <laughs> um no. No, look, I look I'm aware I'm lucky because I have work I can put it out there. So I'm not just sitting there going like, hey, look at how cute in this new cat or like, oh, I'm so mad about this thing, hashtag. You know, I have at the very least five times a month covers, stories, art, videos from things that I can put out there, which is my job and stuff I've made. So that's that's a lovely cushion and then of course I, I'm always on my sets if I can be I'm chasing the people around with the phone and just being so I have all these other little bits and bobs um again just being less reverent and then um no I think I something's funny I'll post it if something's like I used to be like I used to post more more if I make even if you can imagine but like I, like I can go a day without I, I Instagram stories has been really great because you can just put some news headline up or, or a cartoon or so I think I think stories is more for my newsy kind of reactive stuff or silly stuff and then um yeah my my feed is 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 my work or some cool fashion thing or you know a Valentino couture show if I was just so lucky to be there or but no there is not really a system I think but I am an editor like that's my job and so I do obviously I think I do have an instinct of that. It's not going to be 10 pictures of me in said cute coat or 10 whatever from Insta. It's going to be a mix of that because I, I can I'm aware of the rhythm. Yeah. And what fluid and what looks makes me look like a dick or not. <laughs> <laughs> be conscious of what makes you look like a dick, not looking like a dick. That's my that's my theory. Brands on social. Do you have any advice or anyone oh. that you think is doing it well, but just even need general advice? Oh, you know what I love right now? I love this kind of sassy. There's my favorite one right now. I'll just give you a favorite because I really love him. Um, it's a guy. Uh, he's a big fashion fan, but he's funny. It's called, it's called I Deserve Couture. Ooh. And he mixes up kind of fashion criticism and whatever with like funny memes and reactions. And he's a nice little call out bullshit, but he's so joyful about it. Um, but I really, really like him. And um, I found, I think he's a big Valentino fan. And Pia Paolo Piccioli had become friendly with him and invited him to the Couture show. And it just sort of, it struck me about what, again, what you can achieve 
and go to if you have a distinctive voice. And he very much does. Um, so I'd say I'd say he's my number my number one right now. So I think you kind of answered this question, but I'm curious, you know, because of your bold choices that you've made with covers and, and generally covering people um, in the magazine overall, but yeah. is there something that you're looking for specifically when you green light a story or like, it's just, um, you feel it, you know, is it your own instinct? You're not thinking about what readers want. You feel like, you know. A lot of the stories, thank God the ideas are still coming out of my head. Um, so a lot of them are out of my head. So guess what? They get greenlit. Um, wow, Laura Brown, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Signed to Laura Brown. Um, <laughs> I do that probably more than is healthy. But anyway, um, a twist. Like I said, I, I like something that takes somebody's iconography and messes with it a little bit. I really love that. Um, I like... Uh, Personal personal stories from well-known people that kind of universalize them and don't make them seem mm -hmm. so sexy. And not like I'm like 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 a dove campaign, like we're all real. It's like fun, like just universal experiences, I think, that we can sort of take the preciousness out of. Um I love I love an incredible visual. I can I can see the dress I want to shoot right away. I can see how that wants to, I can see the video we want to do. Um just energy really, energy and originality. I think is 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 number one because you know we all get access to the similar sorts of people at similar times you know like we all, we've all got like see monica lewinsky and beanie feldstein are everywhere right now for impeachment monica's a friend of mine she's coming up in an issue soon so but we all just like so you have all of that but you've got to spin it in in your particular way and that's why i've never really been precious like i don't want someone else on a cover at the same time as us or a big story on the same time but i'm always like I, but it's my job to do it better, isn't it? It's my job to be, so I'm not really going to worry if another magazine did them a month ago and it was kind of lame. I'm going to be better. And you've got to believe that you'll be better and you've got to uh, compel your team mm -hmm. to not be bog standard. What's the thing that you're most proud of in your career? Or if you want to be remembered for one thing, what do you think that would be? Uh, I think I'm proud. Oh, actually, this is interesting. I don't know. I mean, this is just the top of mind. I don't know if it would be on my epitaph um but i'm proud that people trust me mm -hmm. and i i and with, with trust comes creativity comes beautiful things that you make things that you produce together um i've proud i'm proud that i've earned the trust of people in the industry of obviously friends and everything else but i think that there's that's something that's not to be underestimated in my business and uh and have i've never articulated that before thank you brilliant pulitzer prize interviewer um no trust i that's right. sometimes i get surprised i'm always like with some like actress mates on the phone and she's like downloading something and i'm like i mean i am a journalist but i'm not like you know what i mean i'm like oh wow well, they're really it's me. very it's very <laughs> apparent it's very apparent even just from the outside to see that there's that's what my first question there is okay. just this you have you attract there's something about you that makes people feel comfortable and it is because you are so real you know it's because i blackmail every single last and that month. too of course mm -hmm. last thing that made you belly laugh <laughs> uh armand don't give anything away because i'm only two in oh shit, armand well then you're gonna have to watch it and then i will go armand in a scene in the finale episode of white lotus and you will fill it in when you watch it great uh it best thing you ate you put it that way wait say it again <laughs> it will stay with you. okay i i heard it's fantastic best yeah. thing you ate recently Ooh, um oh god the 21 pastas i ate in italy france and then italy again um i counted them and i put them on instagram um i was like i was stoked to be able to go to some shows this time and i had a few days in and out um, I think it was a vongole specifically um, in Venice, and it was little tiny clams, and it also had pureed the other clams in the sauce rather than just the thing with the clams in it. I always, that's my favorite pasta, linguine with clam sauce, but I always ask for double the clams. I pay for okay. extra clams every yeah. time. There's not enough clams, but little did I know, just chop it up. You're happy as a clam. They blended the clam, I guess. <laughs> And um, no, but I, every single pasta I had, but I would say that Vongole in Venice was was it for me. Oh, I'm in Italy in too long. Okay, quarantine ritual you're sticking with. <laughs> um, <laughs> a mini vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> My two tools of the a cordless. Is it cordless? Stave off, yeah, to stave off nervous breakdowns. 
A um, mini pack and a box cutter. Okay. All my packages that would go to InStyle come to me. You can imagine the thrill. Oh, yeah. And we don't have a doorman. Um, so it's uh, often turns about six times a day. So sometimes I think I'm going to have a breakdown and then I just go, no, we're just going to cut up the box. Oh, something in the box is nothing I ever needed and never wanted. Okay, that's fine. We're going to take the box outside. We're going to do it. But that, yeah, uh, mini, mini vac and a box cutter. All right, this last question. I, I think you've done this, but I mean, you do this every day. But someone who is doing, you know, who do you want to throw some buzz to? So someone that's doing something cool or some cool place that not enough people know about. Uh... Like as in like a destination or like a designer or, a or person or any, anything that you're like, God, that's so not enough people know about this, but you kind of do this for a living. If you put people on the map. Uh, no, let me think about this. Um, I think my new, my new best friend, you know, uh, is no, it's a guy, <laughs> it's a designer called Patrick Henry and he uh, has a brand called rich fresh and it's so, and he's so fresh. He's so fresh. And it's sort of like, you know, he's a tailor, a tailor by trade, um, but makes um, these, I saw this suit that Justin Bieber wore in his the last video. It was a peach, high waisted, and Carla Well, which is his style, is one of my good mates. And I was like, who made that? And, he, and, I, and he's the most incredible tailor. He also makes um, face masks called Henry Mask. And he also does these track suits that just have this sort of like, almost like lightning bolt stripes through them. He's just a really, an idiot. He's had a, like, up until a few years ago, he had a really rough time. He was an addict. He's got like a, a young daughter. He's the freaking, he's the first person to say this, you know, he's he's the freaking slickest, most enthusiastic. Um, he wrote me, um, I was at the the bungalows in um, LA yeah. one day and I got a PM from him. Do I follow him? He said, well, you were at the bungalows. I just was looking at you like, you. I loved your shirt. And I wish I'd come over and say, it was just, he was just so nice. <laughs> he's so nice and he's so distinctive and when I meet people like that, I get so excited. So he's in like the November issue. I've already shot him at home. I'm right. like, I'll just go all in. So yeah, I, th I think I say it's Patrick. I Mr. like that. Patrick himself. Laura, thank you. So it's uh -huh. fun. Thanks. So you have no peer, friend. I'm so, so proud. Uh -huh. I'm so proud of you, freaking empire builder. <laughs> <laughs>